What I'm going to talk to you about is Paul's metaphor for life. Now, let me, let me explain a metaphor in case you don't know what that is. A metaphor is a statement of something that describes it in terms that it's not. Uh, a metaphor is a comparison of one thing with another. And so uh, a, a metaphor might be something where we might say, boy, it's as cold as ice. Now, how many people know it's probably not literally below 32 degrees? But we use that term as a metaphor. It's as cold as ice. And uh, we might say that about a person. That person's as cold as ice. Well, we know they're not 31 or 30 degrees, but it's a metaphor where we describe something using the terms of something else. And so what I want us to see today is Paul's metaphor for life. And uh, there are different metaphors for life, and we can talk about those metaphors, probably bring up a few, in fact, but the only metaphors that count are the metaphors in the Word of God because we understand when Paul was writing Timothy, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit, and when he began to write these things and use metaphors for life, he was defining and describing our lives as Christians. And, uh, we might say that life is like a marathon. We might say that life is like a school bus. We might say that life is like clouds. We might say that life is like a thousand things. But the only things that matter is what the Scripture says that life is like. And when I read these words, I'm especially interested in them because Paul was nearing the end of his life. Somebody said one time, the two most important times when a person speaks are the first words they say and the final words that they say. And so the final words that Paul was saying, perhaps the final things that he ever wrote in his life, he wrote to Timothy. And in those three verses that we read, there are three metaphors for life. Now, I don't know if you want to live by Forrest Gump's metaphor, but you can live by these three metaphors. And these three metaphors define for us what life ought to be. When you look at life, it can become confusing. The health care bill alone is confusing. But beyond the health care bill, bill we've, got, we've got our own personal finances. We've got relationships with people we work with and go to school with. We've got taxes to pay. We've got a mortgage. We've got these things in life until it becomes so complicated. Sometimes we need to decomplicate life and go back to a metaphor and remind ourselves that life is like, and then we can fill in the blank. And it's going to be a struggle, I think, from day to day to remember what life's all about. I think one of the things that we can get into, especially in America, is we're always looking for some new word, new revelation, and new idea, and new truth. When in fact we need to understand that truth is like a bolt. The more you go around it, the deeper that you get in it. You know, I talk to our people all the time. They're wanting some new truth. They want something new from me all the time. And I say, well, are you doing what I told you to do last week? So what I'm trying to do is not necessarily say anything new to you today, but to remind us what life is all about. The first thing that Paul says when he talks about life is that life is like an offering. Specifically, life is like a drink offering. And the question we have to answer is, is what you're living for worth dying for? Because the fact of the matter is this, everyone in here is going to be poured out for something. And I don't know what you're being poured out for. Some people get poured out for love. They get poured out for other people. Some people pour their life out for their job. They pour their life out for popularity. They pour their life out for material wealth. They pour their life out for prestige. What Paul said to Timothy was this in verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Everybody say a drink offering. The first thing that Paul says here is that life is like a drink offering, and that is you are going to be poured out for something. I found out through everything that I've seen that the happiest people in the world are the ones that have a purpose to give their life to. You see, I believe when we preach a gospel of convenience, we are robbing people from the joy of pouring their life out for something 
that matters. We pour our life out for everything on earth and nothing of it matters. Nothing has any lasting eternal value. And whenever we preach a gospel of convenience, we're robbing people of the greatest joy of humanity. And that is pouring your life out for something that has meaning. Life is like a fight. Look at verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Everybody say, I have fought the good fight. In 1 Corinthians 9, 26, listen to this. Paul said, thus I fight, not as one who punches the air. He said in 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called. You know, the, the amazing thing about it is, is that God has put inside of all of us the heart of a warrior. When the Bible says that life is like an offering... And then it says, life is like a fight. And Paul says, I fought the good fight. Life is like a fight. The reason is because in every one of us, there's fight. Have you ever noticed that somebody's always fighting for something? They're either fighting for land, or they're fighting for wealth, or they're fighting for their rights, or they're fighting to be heard. From the time that a baby is born, it begins to fight for life. I've seen those children born, my own children born, my youngest son. He's 13 years old. Man, he's, he's a karate champion. Takes a karate and fights a traditional Shotokan karate. And he, wins, he wins every championship he goes to, he wins. But he was born premature. And I'm telling you, that little guy wasn't about that big. And uh, we didn't expect to have a baby that day. My wife went to the doctor and they, they were watching her because she had a troubled pregnancy. So she had an emergency C-section. This little baby was born. When he was born, they laid him out and he couldn't breathe. So they began to work on him. We didn't know if he was going to live or die. But I watched that little guy fight for life. There was something in him that said, I want to live. And I'll never forget the image of this small, tiny little human being <laughs> with every fiber of his little body trying to draw breath into those lungs. I've seen people at the end of their life with that same determination hold on to literally the last dying breath. God put inside of every one of us the desire to fight and the desire to win. Life is a war. Life is a battle. But we fight from a position of victory. Finally, Paul said in verse 7, not only have I fought the good fight, but I have finished the race. I've kept the faith. Life is like a race. Life is like a drink offering. Life is a battle, and life is a race. But here's the thing about this race. It's not, a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And you know, if I could do anything today, I would look each one of you in the eye, and I would just say this from my perspective to encourage you and say, you got to keep on running. Come on, you don't have time to sit down. You don't have time to stop. You know, I know there's times when we go through life and we feel like throwing in the towel or we feel like just giving up, but you know what? You can't, you can't any more give up today than you could yesterday. Life is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Sometimes we feel like we're sprinting, sometimes we feel like we're making headway, but you have got to continue with consistency doing what you know to do is right. The 23rd Psalm, David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, I, if you may be in the shadow of death, you say, when am I going to get out of this this valley, I don't know when you're going to get out of the valley, but I know this, if you stop, you're never going to get out. The only way to live your life is to be poured out, is to be involved in this battle, to run this race with endurance and patience because we're not home yet. And it will be worth it all on that day. How many people want to stand before God and say to God like Paul, oh, I was poured out, baby. I ran my race and I fought. I probably fought some battles I probably shouldn't be fighting. But it, if I was in doubt, I fought, Lord. 